So, have you ever tried to do Diet Coke and Mentos like I just showed you in the video? Some of you yes, some of you no. Okay, if you are going to go home and do it just because you're curious, do it outside, not inside the house. Okay, now some people earlier was like, that can't be real because it spewed for a long time. Have you ever put your thumb over the end of a water hose? You know how it goes faster and higher and stuff like that? Some of the um, parts of that experiment that they did, they had certain things over the bottle so it would last longer and go higher, just so you know. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about this worksheet, though. Okay. Uh, phys a physics class hypothesized that dropping more Mentos into the bottle would create a higher stream of soda. The class conducted an experiment with several packages of the candy and eight two-liter bottles of soda. The results are given in this table below. What do you notice about the table? It's missing some numbers, right? Five and seven are there, but there's no data for five and seven. Well, that's because the group who used five and seven accidentally knocked over their Coke bottles. Idiots. When the reaction occurred, so no data is available for those entries. Okay. First thing I want you to do is make a scatter plot of your data. And the reason I want you to do that is because that's what the worksheet says next. Okay. Do you remember how to make a scatter plot of data? Can I remind you? Okay, I'm going to zoom in so you can just see the calculator so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay. If we're making a scatter plot, what are we choosing first? Yeah, first we have to choose a list and spreadsheet, right? So first we're going to choose number four. What are we going to call this column of data? That's what we normally call it, right? But what is it called in this problem? So can we just call it Mentos? M-E-N-T-O-S. That's allowed? We can call it Mentos? Heck yeah. Okay. We don't have to be boring and call it X. If the table is called X, yeah, we could call it X, but table is actually called number of Mentos, right? I don't want to type in number of Mentos, though, because I don't think it will fit, honestly. Okay. And if it does fit, all I could see is number. Does that make sense? Okay. Everybody, everybody remember how we got here? We started a new document, menu, list, and spreadsheet, right? Okay. We called our X column Mentos. Let's enter our X data. What's our X data? One, two, three, four. Oh, can we use five? How come we can't use five? There's no Y value for that data, right? So we can't use that five, can we? So we go to six and then can't exactly can't use seven so we go to eight does that make sense what are we going to call our y column yeah, height would be good spray would be okay but height is a little bit more clear about what we're talking about right g h t now what kind of data goes in height so six eleven twelve fourteen sixteen I skip the question marks and go to 20, skip the question marks again and go to 22, right? How can I see my data? You remember? We need to add a page, right? So control doc to add a page. Just to make sure control is here, doc is here. So control doc to add a page. What kind of page are we adding? Very good, a data statistics page, which for us is number five, okay? Now, right this second, should ours look exactly the same? No. Okay? It might, but it probably doesn't. Okay? It's not going to look the same until we do what? Yeah, until we assign our variables. What variable goes here? Oh, is it height or Mentos? Mentos, because X, X is our Mentos, right? X is the top part of the table. So we choose Mentos. And so that what, what leaves for what if we're over here? height. Now should our graphs look the same? Yes, now they should look the same. Okay, what does that look like to you? It looks like a line. A rainbow, okay. We don't normally talk about rainbow functions in Algebra 2. What kind of function does it look like that we've been talking about for the last four weeks? 
We haven't been talking about quadratics for the last four weeks, but good guess. It is something we've talked about before, but not recently. What's it called? You're showing me with your hand. I get that. That's good. But what's it called? What'd you say? Nope. That's a good guess, though. Guys, what does this look like? What kind of graph does that look like? A square root function? Right? Square root function? <laughs> so if, if I want the equation for that data, how do I, how do, I do that? Oh, wait, time out. The other way you could tell it was a square root function, because right here it says what characteristics of the graph indicate that a square root function might be a good model for the data. <laughs> so if we were going to fill in that question real quick, what characteristics of the graph indicate that a square root function might be a good model for this data? What do you think? It does, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a square root function? Yeah. Yeah, not every answer that we give always has to be like super mathy, right? Okay. Let h of x be the function that approximate the height of the spray. So we're gonna need we're gonna need the equation, right? So let's analyze. What do we normally do? Regression. Which one do I choose? What what type of function did we decide it was? The square root function? So can I choose linear? No, because it's not a line. Can I choose quadratic? It's on a parabola. Cube is, cubic is x to the third. Is that what I need? No, quartic is x to the fourth. Is that what I need? Power function is like y to the x or x to the y, it's not what I need. Exponential is like 2 to the x, also not what I need. Logarithmic, we haven't even talked about it yet. Sinusoidal, oops, that's a sine curve. That's not what we need. Logistic, logistic? Uh, oh, the calculator's broken? Okay, so it's not. if it's not on the list, then I can't choose it, can I? So I have to come back here, and I have to choose plot function. Now it tells me in my directions the rule for this can be written as h of x equals a times the square root of x. So I have to figure out what value for a that I should put in right here to try to fit to the data, right? So what if I chose 2? Does that fit to the data? So how do I figure out the next one that I should try? Yeah, I guess. Three? Well, that's better, but not right. So spend a couple of seconds on your own without talking out loud and try to figure out what you would use for the value of A in this problem that would fit the data the best. See, we already saw that 2 was too low and 3 was too low. Anybody try 12 or 10? Oh, 10 was too high. Okay. So you know it's in between. 6 is too low. So look what I got. Look what I used, though. Did any of you try decimals or did you all try whole numbers? Get out of your head. Which one do you think is closer? 7.98 or 8? 
Did you even see it move? It moved slightly, but not really, right? So at this point, who's to decide who's right? Yeah. So is there multiple right answers? Are there wrong answers? Give me an example of a wrong answer. 6 and 12, those are both wrong, right? We, we said those were too far away. If I'm trying to get as close as I possibly can, it would need to be something around 8, wouldn't it? 7.98, which is what I had. 8.02, I think, is, is good, right? But 8.5, would 8.5 be good? Mm, that's too high, isn't it? Okay, so there would have to be like a range of data that we could choose from. So like if this question was on a test, there could be multiple right answers because if I'm trying to decide which one is the closest, that's really my opinion, isn't it? Now, it's an opinion within a certain range, right? Um, knowing that there could be some wrong answers. Uh, is it okay with you if, as a group, we use 8 for our A value? You're okay with that? Okay. So it says, determine a value for H, so we're, for, for A. So we're saying H of X is going to equal 8 times the square root of X. We all said that was okay to use? And tell how you found it. So we used the calculator. And we guessed. Um, is guessing allowed? Are there certain situations that guessing is not allowed? Yes. If I'm trying to teach you how to use the quadratic formula and you get an answer with no work, it doesn't work, does it? There's no credit for that, is there? But if I'm asking you to try to figure out an A value in this situation, is guessing okay? <coughs> yes, it absolutely depends on the situation, doesn't it? Okay. With your value for A, use your function to estimate the height of the spray for x equals 5 and x equals 7. So if I know that h of x equals 8 times the square root of x, what am I trying to figure out? H of what? H of 5, right? It's telling me x equals 5. Well, if x equals 5, aren't I trying to find h of 5? So what do I plug in for h of 5? So 8 times the square root of 5. Do you know that off the top of your head? Good thing all of you have calculators right in front of you, right? So please put in 8 times the square root of 5 and tell me what you get. 17 point what? 8, 8, and what's the fourth one? 5, so 8, 8, 9. You okay with that? And what about, what's the other one we have to find? H of 7. Okay, so that would be 8 times the square root of 7. What is 8 times the square root of 7? 1, 6, 6. Okay, so now let's talk about these answers. Did I, get, did I do anything wrong? I did everything right and got this, right? Now I need to think about the problem to begin with. I got to go back to the context of the problem, okay? First of all, 17.889 what? Feet. And 21.166 what? Also feet. But look at that information compared to the data that they got when they measured their. First of all, as a side note, I would not be OK with this if I was this physics teacher. We could be a lot more observant than just six feet. I know it's hard to see spray as it's shooting up to see how high it goes. But the difference between six feet and the difference between six and a half feet that should be something you should be able to see, right? Now, six feet versus six feet, one inches, 
Maybe not. That would be tough to see, right? Um, but maybe a little bit more specific than just whole numbers would have probably been better, right? Even if you look at our graph, what can you tell me about this dot? It's what? It's a little off. It's too low, isn't it? So I know that the, the spray probably went higher than six feet, right? And that better data would have given us a better equation, wouldn't it have? Okay, so, but we're not going to judge that physics teacher. Maybe they were having a rough day. Okay, my point is, does this data that we got here match with the data that we have here? It really doesn't. What would be better for this answer right here? 18 feet. What would be better for this answer right here? 21 feet. Now, is this answer wrong? No, this answer is in fact our work, right? This is our work and this is our answer that matches the data. Now, if the data over here said 6.257 feet, this would be perfectly fine, wouldn't it? Okay, but this may match better with the data that's given to us. Does that make sense? Okay, how are you gonna know which one I want on a test or a quiz? I will make it clear. <laughs> I will say, estimate the blah, 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 round to the 10th or round to the 100th. So, but that also means what? You have to read the directions. I know, I know, I know, it's okay. Number three, with your function rule, estimate how high the soda would shoot out of the bottle if you used 10 Mentos. So first of all, I'm sorry we had to use this word in class today. Sorry about that, okay? but. You understand why? We don't say it again. No, we don't say it again. Okay. Okay, so what are we trying to find here? Wait, the same thing? Why are they asking it again? They asked it in a different way, didn't they? They wanted to make sure you understood the academic language. Whoop, that's an eight, and that's a 10. So what are we writing as our work? No, 25 point what? 298. And then what are we writing as our answer? 25 feet, okay? Using your function rule, set up and solve an inequality. Guys, how many inequalities did we do this chapter? Zero, okay? So our function rule, our function rule was 8 times the square root of x has to have something to do with 30. It has to go at least 30 feet in the air. What inequality symbol is going to go in between these? How about greater than or equal? It has to be great. It has to go at least 30 feet in the air, so it could be 30 or more, right? So I want you to solve this, and I want you to answer number 5 for tomorrow, okay? Any questions?